Welcome to Discover Cape. Discover Cape is a 30-minute program that will introduce you to fascinating people, take you to interesting places, and enlighten you on important events that happen in our region. This month, we take another ride on the luxurious Grandpa Wu. We get a preview of the upcoming theatrical performance of Romeo and Juliet from the Department of Theater and Dance at Southeast Missouri State University. We visit with Cape Girardeau's town crier and highlight a place for all artists to show their stuff in the annual and very popular artscape. So stay tuned. This program is sponsored in part by Ameren. Passing gas in the presence of others is not only inappropriate. That is so foul. It can be deadly. Passing gas releases a fog of carbon monoxide. Grandpa. And other poisonous fumes that can contribute to asthma and pneumonia. You're killing us over here. Kids shouldn't be exposed to secondhand smoke. Don't pass gas, take it outside. I think it would be easy to tell which kids have trouble with their eyesight. But that's not always the case. Even though one in four children may have a vision problem, eye doctors tell us the symptoms aren't always so obvious. We do know that 80% of all childhood learning is visual. And without good vision, kids can have trouble learning to read. And may fall behind in school. For clues on how to spot the real life signs of childhood vision problems and what parents can do, visit checkyearly.com. A public service message from the Vision Council of America and reading is fundamental. Who'd go out on a night like this? We do. The very worst brings out the best in us. Up first, a ride on the Grandpa Wu. This luxury cruise ship takes passengers for a view of Mississippi that most never get to see. It's a pleasant ride and a nice visit with Captain Dana, the owner of the Grandpa Wu. Hello, I'm Captain Dana, the captain of the Grandpa Wu 3, an excursion vessel that sails the waters of Lake Superior in the summer and of course the waters of the Gulf of Mexico in the winter. That's what brings us here to Cape Girardeau. The Grandpa Wu 3 is the third of a series of excursion vessels that my wife and I have owned and operated. And of course, this voyage began years ago when I retired from the Army, a retired military officer with 20 years active duty. I actually am the hostess for the, our ship, and my husband is the captain, and we've been doing this for 16 years now, I think. <laughs> Anyway, um, we started with a 22 foot, a little fishing boat. That was probably somebody's rich person's, a little dinghy. And just a couple of weeks before it arrived, my wife's father passed away with liver cancer. That's when our children said, Mom, Dad, we should name the new boat after Grandpa. So that's the source of the name Grandpa Wu. It took four years to build up enough business to just do scenic cruises. As we entered 1996, we knew that we had the volume of business and passengers to make that leap. We found a buyer for the Grandpa Wu One and made a deal to sell it. Now we're nervous because there's no ship and you're still offering scenic cruises uh, with no boat. But we were fortunate and found a great replacement, a beautiful 110 foot vessel. We began doing excursions up on Lake Superior, but it didn't take long to discover that there are fantastic resources along all of our waterways, especially here at Cape Girardeau. The history of this community is astounding, and what's really a privilege is to be able to see that history from the waters of the Mississippi, the very same waters that caused Cape Girardeau to be historic. 
The Grandpa Wu began coming here to Cape Girardeau way back in 1994, first voyage through here. Cape Girardeau has opened its doors to visitors and that's very well demonstrated by the beautiful murals uh, that pretty much say, welcome to Cape Girardeau, come visit us. Um, the arrangements took place in the fall of 2003. Uh, Captain Dana Collars and his wife, Chenay, um, were here in Cape. They had docked at the riverfront and had come into the Convention and Visitors Bureau and talked with our director, Chuck Martin, and uh, they had a meeting and, and to see if they could uh, have a relationship, if, if they would like us, if we would like them, and uh, they had a trial period in um, spring of 2004. They had some trial cruises with community leaders and um, the business, some business owners in the community, and it worked out great. The relationship became very bonding between both, both parties, the boat along with the Cape Girardeau community. And then two years ago, the Cape Girardeau Visitors and Convention Bureau opened up their arms and invited us to stay here and offer open boarding cruises as well. Since then, we've been returning more often, more frequently, with more passengers, and of course the result has been wonderful. Lots of people who live in this area now have an opportunity in the fall and the spring to get on the waters of the Mississippi and enjoy that rich cultural history and also take advantage of the beautiful flora and fauna along the riverbanks as well. The Grandpa Wu has three diesel engines with a total of just under 2,000 horsepower allow this vessel to move at speeds of 27 miles an hour. But of course, most of our passengers prefer a quiet cruise so they can take the time and see the sights and enjoy the view. How in the world does a retired army officer end up driving a ship on the waters of the Mississippi? Well, it stems from way back in uh, my early childhood. I have always had a love for large open bodies of water. And of course, once I retired from the military, to discover that we could sail the waters of the Great Lakes and the Western Rivers and make a living at that has truly been an, ex an enjoyable endeavor. Frequently our passengers will tell my wife and I that we must have a wonderful life living on the water, and that's true. This vessel not only serves as a business where my wife and I can take people out and share the experiences of the water with them, but it's also our home. We live on board year round, and we get to see the waters of the Great Lakes, Lake Superior, Lake Huron, Lake Michigan, as well as a wide variety of our major city and it is a wonderful transition from army life where you get up in the morning and you're told what clothes to wear and what time you have to go to work to being on the open waters and having a lot of freedom to explore the waters that we love and of course an opportunity to meet really fantastic people who also share their interests with us in enjoying the sights and the waters of our country. Right on around 20 May, the Grandpa Wu will be back here offering open boarding, scenic cruises, as well as our cruises for our corporate clients through the 4th of June. And then, of course, the waters of Lake Superior will be beckoning the Grandpa Wu back up to the North Shore. So, if those of you who are interested, if you want to line the riverbanks and come see the Grandpa Wu sail in here, uh, be on hand right around 20 May. And if you want to get a booking, if you want to be able to ride on the Grandpa Wu to see this part of the Mississippi River, the best thing to do is contact the Convention and Visitors Bureau here at Cape Girardeau, Missouri. It was chosen because it's one of the greatest pieces of literature ever written. Uh, it's certainly Shakespeare's most popular play uh, and has been so for a, a good you know, 500 years. New Year's Eve, 2002. Just two years ago. In the sixth grade. July 11th, 1994. I was shot by a teenage gang member. My son Valentino was killed by a drunk driver. My baby brother Joseph was shot. I was sexually assaulted. My wife Emma was killed by a drunk driver. My heart was ripped apart. The day this happened to us, our family died. At that time, I had no idea that I needed help or that my family needed help. 
I didn't know help was there. A detective told us about victims' assistance. We did receive help with the funeral and burial. They informed me of my court dates. They paid for my wheelchair accessible van. If you're a victim of crime, seek help because help is there for you. Even if you never reported the crime. Crime Victims Assistance Programs are there to help. Justice isn't served until crime victims are. He graduated from one of the best medical schools, walked into a built-in practice. As an Air Force flight surgeon, he's learned that not all battles are fought in the air. And to understand the stresses of high-speed flight, he has to experience them firsthand. So if you want to practice medicine in a more stimulating atmosphere, call 1-800-423-USAF. Because you believed in me. I can believe in me. I can believe in me. Because you pushed me to because be better. Because you pushed me to be better. I learned to push myself. Push myself. myself. Because you showed me respect. Respect. I respect others. I respect myself. Because you showed me a place. I can use everything you everything taught me. Everything you taught me. I found my place. I have found my place. This is my place. For all the young men and women in the United States Air Force, there was one person who showed them the possibilities and opened the door. To the teachers, counselors, ministers, and moms and dads who helped a young man or young woman discover that the greatest force of all is inside of themselves. We thank you. And more importantly, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. They thank you. From the most influential writer in all of English literature, William Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet will be performed by the students at Southeast Missouri State University. We visit with Dr. Ken Stilson, the director of this production, and discuss the future of the New River Campus. My name is Ken Stilson, and I am the director of Romeo and Juliet. I am also the director of the Department of Theater and Dance here at Southeast Missouri State University. I began work, the pre-production work on Romeo and Juliet, over a year ago. Matter of fact, we selected the play in June 05. It was chosen because it's one of the greatest pieces of literature ever written. Uh, it's certainly Shakespeare's most popular play uh, and has been so for a, a good, you know, 500 years. And it is, uh, it has the staying power because it's got something that we can all relate to, that uh, the idea of forbidden love. We're breaking some of the rules in terms of tradition, although it's, it's fairly common. Uh, in today's world to think about uh, multi-cultural uh, casting, okay, colorblind casting. And in our production, our Lord Montague is a, is a black man. Uh, his son, Romeo, is a, is a young black man as well. And uh, he, is, uh, he is in love, he falls in love with a young white Juliet in this case, who so it is so there is the idea of forbidden love as as seen through uh, the diversity of races and the prejudices that go on there. Uh, so that in itself is a is a contemporary take on the classic setting. People that are involved in the production it's it's pretty complex and it depends on the show itself but this one has got scenic designers lighting designers sound designers costume designers uh, marketing uh, directors uh, and then there's a whole host uh, probably a hundred students who are working backstage to do all of the 
technical elements that, that go along with the design uh, team that I was just talking about. And one significant thing about this production too is we have a guest designer who is coming in to compliment our professional designers on staff. Uh, he's, uh, his name is Pat Atkinson and he's coming from the University of Missouri Columbia. He's the chair and head designer there and he is responsible for the setting of this, uh, of this production and we're very happy to have him with us. Uh, the play will be performed uh, on the campus of Southeast Missouri State University at the beautiful Rose Theater. And uh, the production dates are April the 21st through the 30th. You can call the box office at 651-2265 and they can tell you all the specifics about the, uh, you know, the seating and the times and you know, all the dates and all of that kind of thing. We are so excited about about the growth and progress of this department. We are, we are on the brink of becoming one of the preeminent undergraduate BFA, BFA programs, pre-professional training programs in the Midwest. And we have got a curriculum that will rival anybody in the entire region as far as our program is concerned. And we have grown by about three and a half to four times. It's 300 to 400 percent growth over the last five years and we expect this growth trend to continue. We've gone from three faculty to nine professional faculty and the quality of our student is is increasing just you know by by incredible you know, uh, leaps and bounds, and it's it's very exciting time here in this department. River Campus is the icing on the cake. Um, we're still going to keep the, the Rose Theater, the, and it'll be a very vital part of our program, and uh, we, we really like this space, and so it will, it will remain part of our operation and our training. The program is not defined by the River Campus. The program is growing exponentially by its own means, by recruiting and the students and the quality of our work and the professionalism that the faculty bring to this program uh, and, the, and the quality of the students. That's the program. The River Campus is simply going to be a world-class facility that is going to give us even that much more, it's going to make us that much more attractive to potential students and of course to the, to the uh, arts community in the Cape Girardeau and Southeast Missouri area. a few questions about the apartment on Park Street. What was your name? My name, uh, my name is Juan Hernandez. It's been rented. Hello, my name is Sanjay Kumar. I am calling about the apartment on Park Street. It just rented. My name is Tyrone Washington. I'm calling about the apartment for rent on Park Street. It's not available. I use a wheelchair and... It's gone. Hello, my name is Graham Wellington. I'm calling about the apartment for rent on Park Street. Is that still available? Yes, it is. What oh, is? Housing discrimination really? is illegal. If you think you've been a victim, call us. You won't find these highlights on any sports network. Tonight, no medals will be handed out and no trophies to hoist. These are not made for TV games, but when you've got a deep freeze full of 16 ounce ribeyes, pork roasts, and venison sausage, you'll be cheering them on nonetheless. After all, in the untelevised wake of the storm, there's much more at stake than frozen steaks. They've stormed beaches and freed countries. Protected the weak and defeated the strong. Shown courage and compassion. 
They've raised our flag and our hope. They've been called Leathernecks. They've been called Devil Dogs. But above all, they're called Marines. In our continuing efforts to support Cape Girardeau's bicentennial, we visit with Cape's own town crier, Daryl Morgan. My name is Daryl Morgan, and I am also the Cape Girardeau Town Crier. Well, I was looking through the paper one, one afternoon, and the uh, Southeast Missourian uh, was having their 100th birthday, and they had advertised for Town Criers, and there was a contest, and they was going to have a workshop uh, one evening, and so I uh, thought, well, with my voice, it's kind of loud. I've always been told I've, I've had a loud voice. So I said, well, that sounds like a perfect job. We had uh, the North American champion of town criers here. Uh, his name is Redmond O'Colonies. And so we had three people competing for the town crier. And I happened to win the, win, win the competition. Uh, my duties is I am the goodwill ambassador for the town of Cape Girardeau. Uh, I do meet uh, dignitaries uh, when they come to town. Uh, I do meet, uh, uh, perform at festivities or, or functions that the city of Cape Girardeau uh, is, is having. Uh, there was 38, now I'm the 39th town crier in the United States. Uh, the majority of the town criers are located in the northeast uh, mostly to the colonies or the original colonies of the of the country of America. While town criers uh, they proclaim oh yay to get your attention. First they ring a bell. That lets everybody know that he's uh, in the area and it's to draw a crowd. Uh, there's a misnomer that town criers have uh, in the past uh, proclaimed hear ye. Well, they, that's a misnomer. They have never said, hear ye. They've always said, oh yay, which is French for hark or listen. So that's what they are, are, are telling you is, oh yay, oh yay, oh yay. They say it three times. And as they say it three times, they build in intensity or they change the way the word is, uh, the emphasis of the word, because they're trying to get your attention. And the town crier's job was the newspaper back in uh, the days of, of, of old, I guess you would, would say. Uh, it goes all the way back to Greek. Uh, that's how the runners, uh, there was Greek runners that ran to other towns. They give the news of the day. Town criers through the years uh, wore uh, uh, a symbol or the colors of their town. Uh, they were representatives of the king. Uh, you've heard that old saying of don't shoot the messenger. That was really true back then because he was the messenger and they did get killed because they did not like most citizens, some of the citizens, if they didn't like the news that he brought, they did kill them. So, uh, so that's where the saying is don't kill the messenger came from. So they were representatives of the kings. The king took them in and said that he represents me. So if you do any harm to him, you're doing harm to me, and we will come after you if you do that. The hardest thing of being a town crier that I have found is uh, it's not proclaiming the proclamation. It's not meeting the people. It's writing the cry. That's, that takes some time to, to think about, because if you are giving a cry, you need to know a little bit of the history of what you're going to be proclaiming. Because you have to write your own cries and you just get a phone call and said, I want you to be at a certain place and this is what I want you to, to give a cry for. Then you have to sit down and you have to ask some questions. You have to learn a little history of somebody or of the, of the proclamation or the event that you're going to be giving. 
and then uh, do a little research, and then it really helps to be uh, have a large vocabulary because the, uh, the, the crier tries to entertain plus have the right words to, uh, to elaborate on the event and to give you a, uh, an understanding of the message, but yet in very uh, colorful language. The best part of being the town crier is meeting the people and the citizens of Cape Girardeau. And I really mean that. Uh, when I had the, the, the honor of being the town crier to, to uh, proclaim the, uh, the signing of the uh, uh, platting of Cape Girardeau, they, uh, I was downtown, I was walking around in my costume uh, of a town crier, and uh, the people was just, just absolutely fantastic to me. They was always inquisitive. They listened to what I was saying on my cry, on my proclamation. Uh, they would honk their horns and wave, and uh, you know, they just asked a lot of questions. Of, they didn't even know Cape Girardeau had a town crier. Um, one of the main things that draws many children is the kids' art tent. An industrial symphony of man and machine, growling engines and elbow grease, backup plans and watchful eyes, mountains of fuel teeming with big yellow brontosaurs that could pick monster trucks out of their teeth, all to make sure the turbines whirl so the lines buzz, so the night lights of the neighborhood flicker to life when called upon. America's veterans have come from all walks of life and every corner of the nation to bravely serve in protecting our way of life. It is the privilege of VA to return that service with the excellent health care that our veterans have earned. And it is the nurses of VA, men and women of all backgrounds, who help to make that quality health care possible by providing a vital service to the community, by sharing ideas in a supportive, professional environment, by giving the best of themselves every day, and by advancing to the top of their field. But most of all, by providing excellent and direct care to every one of their patients. We are the nurses of VA. VA Nursing, a career in caring. For more information, contact vacareers.com. May is a great month for all artists. Artscape is a day dedicated to all types and forms of all things artistic. Be sure to mark your calendars for a special day in May, Artscape. My name is Claudia Rudiger and I'm currently Chair of the Board of Directors of the Arts Council of Southeast Missouri. And one of our main events is this festival, which is a celebration of arts for people of all ages, and that festival is Artscape. This year it's taking place on Saturday, May 20th at Kapaha Park, and the time is 10 o'clock in the morning until 6 p.m. at night. Some of the activities that we have at Artscape um, one of the main things that draws many children is the kids' art tent. And under the kids' art tent, we kids can be involved in a variety of artistic endeavors. One of the things they can do is make sand art. They can make winged critters. Um, we had this huge bubble making contest that drew a number of kids last year. They really enjoyed that. And they can make musical instruments. They can do stamp booking and make cards. We have coloring, historical coloring, and just a bead making, jewelry making, so just a variety of arts and crafts activities for children. Most of them are free, and a couple of them do cost, but that cost is uh, low $1. Other things that we have are the martial arts will be um, performing again, the chalk walk, the main musical stage, the children's entertainment stage, which will have storytellers, puppets. In conjunction with a couple of my other board members, Artscape has been a sort of an event that's dear to our hearts, and we've grown this over the last couple of years. Thanks for tuning in to this edition of Discover Cape. 
Each month, we will take this journey where there are many places to go, there are many interesting people to meet, and so many new things to discover. Join us again as we discover Cape.